Here we are with the first games of Modern in the post Modern Horizons 3 world. It won't be a full league because one of the games took way too fucking long. But we are playing Blue Black Frog. Think Death Shadow, but instead of pinging yourself down, you're playing creatures like Psychic Frog. After playing a handful of games with this, again, it's not a full league, but after playing a handful of games with this, I realized that Dalthy Voidwalker is bad. Um, and it also has a Nombo Drown in the lock. I say bad, it's not bad. You can make very good lines with it, the card is very good. Um, Graveyard Hate's also pretty good. But I think in this deck, in this shell, when you're playing Drown in the Lock, for example, and you want things in the bin for that, for your opponent's bin, you don't want to play them together. So that, that's probably a different slot for something else. We're playing a lot of one-for-one -one removal. We're playing Thought Seizers, Fatal Pushes, Counter Spells, Drown the Locks, then we're playing Bowmaster, all the good stuff. The new Modern Horizons 3 things are Toxic Deluge in our sideboard, Magus of the Island in our sideboard, because we have Double Island, and we can, to be honest, just fetching one swamp and then having a lot of blue sources in play allows us to play our whole deck anyway, because our deck is primarily blue in terms of its double pips. Uh, we also have a Sink into Stupor, which is just a three-mana bounce spell, which also bounces uh, spells and non-land permanents so you can even like counter a spell in a sense but it's also a bolt land so it counts as one of our lands so we're actually on 18 lands don't let this number up here fool you uh, and then what else we've got we've got Tamiyo and Frog I guess are the big are the big boys and girls so Tamiyo is a 1 mana 0 3 that when it attacks you investigate and then if you've drawn 3 cards in a turn you can exile her flip her over and turn into a Tamiyo the Season Scholar which people think is bad people are saying like the back end doesn't do anything which is kind of true but it doesn't do anything that way that's aggressively fucking awful for your opponent in that it blunts their attacks and reuses spells and stuff. It just becomes a value engine that they can't really realistically deal with in an efficient way outside of having access to burn spells. And I mean, people playing Bolt in Modern is not a thing that's very common anymore, right? I guess Tribal Flames out of the Zoo deck and Bolt out of Burn is probably the, the best way to cleanly kill a Tamiyo. Uh, once she's flipped, that is. And then Psychic Frog is a two-mana one-two that says whenever it does time to play, I draw a card, which is... I think is the cheapest creature we've ever seen that text written on. It is blue-black to make it restrictive to cast, but that's not really restrictive to modern mana bases. Uh, it's got discard a card, put a plus one plus one counter on it, and it exiles three cards from your graveyard, give it flying. So it's this evasive, growing threat that helps you build card advantage or card parity as you remove and counter your opponent's stuff. We are basically a blue-black, protect the queen kind of shell. We are kind of like a Delver deck in many ways, because our threats are cheap and our removal spells are cheap. I've got a couple of Merc Tide in here as well. Honestly, one of those Dalthy Voidwalkers could be another Merc Tide from the couple of games that I played, and then these could be something else, either more removal or a different type of threat. And that is the deck. Um, if you want to see more like this, let me know in the comment section below. If you want to see full leagues, again, let me know down below. The reason this isn't a full league, as I shake my microphone violently with my elbow there, the reason this isn't a full league is because I now want to get on to play a different deck to prepare another video for later today or tomorrow. So I want to get on and play a, a large range of the format. And playing five games at a time per deck is, is a lot when you want to play so much. I have already played uh, a portion of a league with um, the, the Nabu Bant sort of mid-range combo deck, and I didn't get on with it. Uh, I'm basically just not good enough to pilot. The deck is quite hard to pilot. You'll see some of that deck in a moment. Spoilers for my uh, opponents these rounds. If you enjoy the video, hit the link in the description below to go to coolstuffinc.com and get 5% of your order and it helps to support the show. And don't forget, there's a link down there to Patreon as well. You can help support the channel via Patreon for just $2 a month because you access to the Discord server. We've got a Canadian Highlander League coming up as well. With all of that out of the way, let's play some fucking modern. One, the die roll. To one thought sees, then Delphi Void Walker seems fine. We're kind of like Death Shadow, except we'd have to shoot ourselves for loads of damage. We're going to play off Psychic Frog instead of the Shadow. I took one thought sees here. Let's see what opponents cooking with, what they're baking. It's going to be Bant Bird. No, no, I'm lying. It's Hammer Bird, looks like. That's interesting. We take the Scarlet as Aid here. It's the card that enables them to play their like equipment game plan, right? So opponents on the Hammer Plan and they have one creature in the form of Ink Moth Nexus. They drew another Cigar as Aid anyway, so our Thought Seize was largely irrelevant. Sometimes your opponent is better lucky than good. Uh, we draw Counter Spell. I think I'm actually going to get a threat into play before I sit around using Counter Magic. So let's play Dalthy Void Walker. This card doesn't do a whole lot in this matchup. I guess we get to replay one of their pieces of interaction, maybe. Uh, they drew a Stoneforge off the top as well, so I should have sat on the Counter Spell, but fucking hell. Imagine drawing this hot. Like, just like having a hand that was pretty bad once I took the Sigarda's Aid and then just uh, Sigarda's Aid into Stoneforge. I guess you win when you have that. So, we can kill the Stoneforge to drown the lock. That's something. I'll drown the lock and Dalthy are actually a non bow, I've just realized. We can go ahead and preordain, put a Void Walk on the bottom of our library, put a Bauble on top, draw it, we play a Bauble. We can look at the top card of their library. It's gonna be a Flooded Strands. They're drawing a Strands, so we know their hand exactly. So they got Mogul Knife, Shuko, Colossus Hammer, Planes, Colossus Hammer, Flooded Strand. Sorry, only two Colossus Hammers. Mogul Knife and Colossus Hammer, both being Colossus Hammers. We'll get in for three. We're going to drown this Stoneforge Mystic. I don't think I should be playing Drown and Dalthy in the same deck, 
And I've just realized that, which is pretty brutal. We draw off the bauble, find counter spell. So if they play a pure steel here, we can counter it. I guess, no, we have to kill the stone forge. Oh no, we knew that they were drawing. They drew the strand they just cracked. So we know about that. We're gonna let them put all their equipment onto that stone forge and then just kill it. Oh, they're gonna animate the ink moth nexus. Yeah, okay. Go for the kill with that, fair enough. Get them to attack. They swing. We say no blocks. They put a Colossus Hammer into play. The hammer's gonna try to target the Stoneforge Mystic. We're gonna cast Drown the Lock and we're gonna destroy the Stoneforge Mystic, which we can just about do through our Void Walker. That means we're still in hammer trouble next turn, but at least we can counterspell the hammer. Um, so we can play a, we can play a Merc Tide here. It gives us a blocker as well, which is pretty good. So we now have a blocker for the uh, Colossus Hammer carrying creature. We have counterspell for the next Equipment they try to put on the Ink Moth Nexus. They're going to play Planes, activate Ink Moth, go to combat attack. We can count on one of the hammers. Can't count with the Shuko, but then we can still block, so. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good spot to be in. Playing all the Thoptus, we know all the cards they've got. They've got three cards in hand. We know Mogul Knife, Shuko. Actually, we're missing one. I don't know what the other card is. I don't know how we've missed that. We knew what the card they drew last turn and this turn was, but maybe I'm an idiot. Maybe they just played the Planes that wasn't in their hand and I've cancelled the Planes that I... We knew about. The Shukos are in their decks, they can play it with Nardu. That's why they're Bant Hammer now. That's gotta be a better plan. I played Bant, Nardu, Nabu, whatever the fuck it's called earlier, and it was just bad. It's really, really bad. So if they get attack here, and we say no blocks, they cast a hammer, we're gonna counterspell it. And if they have a third hammer, wait, they have a third hammer, because that's what the Stoneforge got? Yeah, I should have blocked. We knew about that. Cool. Oh wait, Mogul Knife. Oh, Mogul Knife is not a hammer. Mogul Knife is a Shadow Spear. This is all working out like I thought. We did know everything in their hand. The last card in their hand is currently a Shuko. They're on 10 now because the life link from the from the spear, frustratingly. Play Dark Slick Shores. Go to combat. Get in for nine. They can block here with a Murktide Regent. Probably should. Because like with the Shadow Spear plus Shuko plus the Ink Moth Nexus is three life link for them. They go to one here. So they're dead. They're not dead to the Dalthy because they can block the Murktide next turn after gaining the light. They play a Shuko, they stick it on the Ornithopter, they equip the Shadow Spear to the Ornithopter, they get to get in for two here. Oh, they cast a Springleaf Drum. Do I let that resolve? I think I do. Yeah, that's fine. I don't want to count on that. They don't get in for two, they're going to block and gain two in fighting the Murktide here. They just die to the Void Walker. I don't know what's going on. Seems like a bad line. Let's look at the top card of their library. The top card is Nadu. Cool. As we thought. In for three. Got Shadow. They can't block it. Cool. Okay. So we won the game playing zero Modern Horizons three cards. But our opponent didn't play a single Modern Horizons three card either. However, top card of the library, Modern Horizons three. And this card, playable because of the Modern Horizons three. It's playable with Nardu. I think Consign to Memory might be pretty good here. Counter triggered abilities and colorless spells. That seems good. And their mana base is really fucky. So if we double fetch island and just try and harbinger them, I think that's pretty good too. Deluge is good into like their normal bodies, but it's pretty bad if they have a creature holding Colossus Hammer that we have to deal with, and it's pretty bad in taking Moth Nexus. So I don't think I can bring that in either. I really just don't know what I'm cutting. A lot of our cards seem quite good against them. I might mean, like, trim one Bowmaster as they just never draw cards. I kind of want to bring in these stern scoldings too. Are they better than the consigned to memories? They count all the creatures where the consigns count with the shadow spears and the colossus hammers. They don't, these don't count the colossus hammers if they stone forge them in, but it can count the trigger from a cigar aid to leave the colossus hammer just sat there doing nothing. Um, so I don't hate it. Let's, let's roll with that. Let's see how this goes. Our hand has one modern horizons three card in it and it's a um, bolt land. Um, this hand has a push, which is pretty good. <laughs> Imagine if that's all you needed in keeping your hand in modern was just a fatal push. But fatal push is pretty good. Uh, they play a Shuko, sure. I don't really think about my sideboard in terms of what's good in the Shuko. Hmm. Shuko doesn't draw cards, so it doesn't trigger Bowmaster, frustratingly. They play two bodies there, we draw a land. I think we're going to bauble ourselves to see if we want our next card. It's a polluted delta, so we don't want it. So we're going to go ahead and play Under City Sewers, and we're going to surveil that into the bin. Now... Sink into Stupor is a three mana or turn target or spell or non land permanent to an opponent controls to its own hand. Now, whilst it's a land on the other side, well, we've got four, three other lands in hand now. It's going to be a three mana balance spell once some Colossus Hammers are stuck on a creature. Stoneforge is for a Colossus Hammer and then equips their Shukos with an Ornithopter. They get in for two. We go to 18 and we untap. We find Orcish Bowmasters, which is not terrible. Pretty good, actually, for giving us bodies. God, it's weird. I haven't really talked about or played with Orcish Bowmaster for a hot minute because. 
all the conversations have been around Modern Horizons 3. So it's some Modern Horizons 2.5 action. Opponent plays a plane, so the Saga's ticking up. They haven't got any way to get the Colossus Hammer onto a creature yet. They go to combat attack with everything. I guess I'm gonna flash in Bowmaster, ping the Stoneforge, and then go to blocks and also block the Stoneforge from killing it. I'll keep my other body around for a moment. Stop some casting cantrips, I guess. Like, a, like they're, um, the Paladin that makes their equipment's cantrip. They're gonna make a Colossus at the end of their turn, it looks like. We draw Tamiyo, which is pretty sweet here, I think. I'm probably doing some combination of Drown the Lock plus Push, and then resolving the Tamiyo afterwards. Let's play a Delta. Pass to our opponent. They make a body in our end step. Yeah, that's a Construct token that we can kill with Fatal Push, even when it's not enabled. Saga's gonna go and find them a, probably a um, Shadow Spear of some kind. They're gonna make another body. Those bodies are five fives now. They get Springleaf Drum, they want some mana. They use the Springleaf Drum with Class Colossus Hammer. Sorry, I banged my mic as I was saying that. So Hammer's now in play, and they move to combat. In they come, I'm just gonna push. Construct token. I wonder if I'm meant to kill the author up to hit. Probably not. I probably have to kill that construct token later. So I'm gonna take one in the air and I'm gonna fetch a shock tapped here. I would love another surveil lamp, but we don't have kind of wish I played Tamio now. That'd be quite a good block of the ornithopter. We untap and draw a swamp. Play the swamp, play the Tamio. And then I guess we've got a chump blocker if they just untap and play um a pure steel pattern and equip that Colossus hammer to something and swing. So I could play Merc Tide here without keeping up without keeping up Drown the Lock. Or I can keep up Drown the Lock. I'm gonna go balls to the wall shield down and make a 4-4 flyer. No attacks from us, and then we'll pass back to them. They correct the Heath that they just played. They have three cards in hand after this we don't know about, and they're shocking themselves too. Oh, this isn't is this a Nardu? Oh, shield down was so stupid. Because it's gonna play a Nardu and win now. I think if they play Nardu, we just we just lose. Yeah, yeah, okay. I fucked this real bad. Um Nardu has to die, like in response to the first sugar activation, which I could have done with a fetch land here. It's drown the lock. So going shield down was stupid. Okay, well, they're gonna move the sugar around two times per creature. Which means they draw two cards per creature, but they don't actually draw, so it doesn't trigger Bro Master. And if they reveal a land at the top of the library, because it's reveal and put into hand, if they reveal a land, it comes to play untapped. It's got so much text on it, and there were a million and one ways they could have made this not as good as it is, but they didn't. But it doesn't matter, because whenever I play with it, I just fucking lose. Um, yeah, going. I, I regressed into some sort of primordial state of playing against Classic Hammer, which meant I thought I could go Shields Down. The truth is, I couldn't and shouldn't have gone Shields Down, because they're not Classic Hammer, they're Bant Nadu Hammer. Which is going to be a thing we're going to see. We're going to see a lot of hybrid decks, probably this, maybe even a Scape Shift variant because the way it hits land drops so easily. There will be other versions of Nadu, like hybrid archetypal decks. So they've activated eight times and they've hit zero lands. So they've filled their hand with interaction, but they've not got anywhere further. Now if they use a Spring Leaf Drum, oh they found an Ornithopter. So they play the Ornithopter, that's two more card draws. Then they'll play another one of opting get two more card draws. They hit the land now. Like, basically, I, I believe I should scoop at this point. They probably aren't going to thash as Oracle win, but they're going to be so far ahead in terms of card advantage, there's not really any way for us to beat them. Importantly, for those wondering at home, you can actually equip the Shuko directly into the creatures already equipped with. You're allowed to target a, or a creature that's already equipped with the same equipment for the equip cost. So you always get two out of one creature, even if you haven't got another creature to move it to. Here's a pure steel paladin. Now, if they play an equipment, I get to zing them. Which is quite nice. Which is probably our only chance here. And if we zing, zing a ding, ping ping the things that they've already equipped to, it doesn't doesn't trigger. They hit Temple Garden there, they got another mana. They shuko, shuko, shuko. Play a Springleaf Drum. They equip the Colossus Hammer to the Memnite. They equip the Shuko to the Construct Tokens. These, these are just huge, like 10 and 11. All right, well, I don't really know what my out is. I'm gonna chump block one, draw a card and see where we're at, but they play a Springleaf Drum, sure. They've cast half their deck. Bowmaster dying is sad. Maybe Tamiyo is actually less valuable here, but who knows. We can get in the air for four by killing their blocker, but that's just not enough. We're on three. They pass back to us. Oh, Toxic Deluge would be kind of good right now. They wouldn't kill the Colossus Hammer though, because I can only do it for two, so they'd still have this body around. We draw Thoughtseize, which is, it allows us to look at the cards in their hands so we can spot some tech before we go to game three. The shield's down turn was really bad. Really, really bad. I should not have done that into a combo deck. I was a foolish fool. Blacksmith skill, there we go. Target permanent, uh, any text proof in turn to turn to turn. It's plus two plus two if it's equipped, sure. Or if it's not a fact, whatever. They're just drawing a card off of it basically before we take it out of their hand. I just want to see their hand before we concede. Multiple Nardi, multiple Stone Force. Nothing new, nothing fancy, but yeah, we're fucked. Okay. I fucked that one. I'm actually going to cut these concerned memories to bring in dress downs and that darn lock again because I want to kill or stop the, the combo turn, right? And then just kill them. Get one consign in. Got swamp to thought sees them. Triple push, Lorien's revealed. Yeah, I quite like this hand actually. Because we can Lorien's revealed for a watery grave next this turn or next turn. I think we turn one thought sees them just to. 
hit their powerful one drop or, or just see what we're working with really. Right, let's take a look. What you got, opponent? Memnite Ornithopter, Pure Steel Paladin, Shadow Spear, and Strix Serenade, which will cancel my Harbinger of the Seas. I think I take that, allow them to play Pure Steel, kill it with Fatal Push. Yeah, that seems good. The Ornithopter that we know about, the Memnite that we know about, the Flawless Triangle, got a Temple Garden that we know about. Play Springleaf Drums. We know all three cards in their hands are Pure Steel Paladin, Winsip Teeth, and the Colossus Hammer. So they're going to get to next turn, play Pure Steel Paladin, play Colossus Hammer, play Pure Steel Paladin, go to equip. We push the thing it's equipped to in the following turn, push the thing that's, uh, that's, uh, push the Pure Steel Paladin. So we're going to Island Cycle here, grab a Water Grave. We're going to play into play, pay the life, and then we're going to pass back to them. Don't worry about it, opponent. We're just, we're just chilling over here. We've got nothing. Worm Safety from our opponent. So they should play Hammer first. If they play Pure Steel Paladin first, we, we get to get them by killing the Paladin before the, before the, a hammer resolves. Do okay. So they play Pure Steel Paladin. They now tap to cast the hammer, and we get them. Their sequencing made it easier for us. Kill the Paladin. They wanted to draw the card, basically. The greed. I mean, I probably would have done the same thing. Drawing cards is good, right? Tech us for one. We drew a Merc Tide Regent, which isn't quite where we want to be. But we can cast Tamio, and we got a fatal push up. Tamio will make a clue for us next time when it attacks. If we draw another land, we can turn all our lands into, into islands, which isn't that great against them, the more you think about it. But it's not. Well, I was say it stops from casting Cigar Aid, but that's going to cast it ahead of time anyway. Cigar Aid, Pure Steel Paladin, and Nardu, I guess. Them struggling to play Nardu is good. But Spring Leaf Drum makes them a green, and then their lands make blue, so they can still cast a Nardu. They're going to equip. Oh, this isn't even a hammer. This is a fucking Shadow Spear. My goodness. If I can get that through my thick fucking skull, life would be very different. Uh, let's kill this. Might save the last push for Nardu itself, obviously. We drew Psychic Frog. We're gonna go to combat, we're gonna attack. They have no sugar in play. So I think we're okay to go shields down here. Black, oh, untap. Blue, black, Psychic Frog. Okay, we've got a lot of card drawing stuff online. If we hit with Frog and crack the clue, we actually get to flip Tamiyo. If they just draw Nardu, if they just fuck, fuck me. Okay, well. They can't equip anything here. We need a fetch land or similar to actually kill that. Bauble enables push. That's good. Let's go Bauble. Look at the top card of our library. It's a dress down. So we don't want to crack this clue to try and hit a land drop then. Then we're going to cast a push. They're going to get to draw a card off this, but we don't really mind. Revolt is enabled. Cool. Then we're going to go to combat and attack. With a 1-2 and a 0-3 in the air. The 0-3 will investigate. The one, two, they can either lose the Memnite or let us draw a card. They can lose the Memnite. Draw a card is not what they want to see. Okay, and also it means we don't hit our third land drop. Because if we went land drop, crack clue, we would have uh, flipped our Tamiyo. We can flip through this turn if we hit the frog. Dress down, plus our card for turn. It's three cards, isn't it? Yeah, three cards. We untap, we draw our third land drop. Um, we can just turn their lands into islands here. But then they untap with a Nardu, and if they untap with a Nardu plus Shuko in hand, which they might be hiding, we probably lose. Hmm, let's go to combat and attack. Like this. Investigate. They block the frog. If we discard the Merc Tide region or the Harbinger, we actually kill the Ornithopter here. Is that worth it? Probably. Not the Merc Tide, though. It's the Harbinger, isn't it? But the Harbinger also turns off their land. So, actually, we discard... This might be a while. Before we discard Dress Down, kill the Ornithopter, and then we play Harbinger, because there's no creature currently in play. The Springly Drum doesn't make any mana. So now they need a colorless creature to get to their green sword. Oh, they went to crack their heath and realize it only makes blue mana now. And this good up. Okay, so we did win with three Modern Horizons 3 cards in play. Um... After pitching our Modern Horizons 2 card, to our Modern Horizons 3 cards. So that's, that's kind of new stuff, right? That's how that works. Another one. Once more around the Mulberry Bush. I'm really not happy I put Dalthy Voidwalker in this deck, if I'm completely honest with you. But I think we keep this two-lander. Um, it's full of good magic cards. Basically, it's got fucking Bauble, which shouldn't really... Oh, this is Titan, isn't it? Uh, and then we've got a load of Modern Horizons 2, Modern Horizons 2.5, and Modern Horizons 3 cards. So that's nice. Uh, we're going to untap for our first turn. We're going to go Dark Slick Shores. Let's make a Tamiyo. Let's make a Mishra's Ball Ball. I'm assuming that they're Titan. In all fairness, I have no fucking idea. Court of Calling. Okay. This might be a Nadu deck then. Court means that killing that plant token with a Bowmaster is probably good. I wonder if I'm going to hold that Ball Ball to flip the Tamiyo. 
They play a Spring Heart Nantuko. This makes a 1-1 every time they play a land. And if it's equipped to a creature as an enchantment, you pay 2 mana every time you play a land to make a copy of the creature attached to it. It's pretty good. We're going to Orcish Bro Mastery. This is a Nadu deck. This is Nadu with um, Urza's Saga, without a doubt. So we're going to go pay 2 life. And we're going to go black, blue, bow master that spring heart before they can play a land. Get that out of here. Go to combat, attack, trigger. Get ourselves an investigate token. Cool. Investigate token? What the fuck am I talking about? It's called a clue token for those of you at home who've been playing for more than five seconds. It even says it on the tin, look. It says it right there. I'm happy that the clue token is uh, appropriately themed. It's a great one from Modern Horizons 3. It's pretty sweet. Saga ticks up. If they go blue source Nardu, we don't really have an easy clean kill to it because they're because their graveyard isn't full enough for a drown lock. Our boil grazers, they're on like Titan, Titan Nardu, I assume. They hit another Saga off the uh, boil grazer. They play Ottawara for turn. They play Shuko, so they're definitely on the bird. We had to keep Count Magic up next turn, which is pretty sweet. We draw another Tamiyo. So let's go to combat and make a clue. I guess we just swing with everything. Like, we don't really care about, like, not swinging with everything, should I say? We're gonna quack for a surveil land in their turn, and we're just holding up counter spell here to to counter something. They might have cord up in our following turn, so maybe. Hmm. I was thinking, what do we drown? No, I'm just counter spelling the bird. That's where we're at. They might try and cord for the bird in our end step. Um, but if they don't do anything in our turn, in their turn, we can always crack a clue on their end step anyway. So they make a saga token. They go looking. They go looking for another Shuko. Probably, they're going to probably grab it. If they grab a needle in my delta, I'll be really annoyed. Second copy of Shuko. Didn't get punished. Delighted Halfling, which can actually counter. Um, that can counter our counter spell, essentially. But we can't and we can't bow master it. So I need to drown that, but I need to hit land drops too. So I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna fetch a land here. We're going to go under City Sewers and Surveil. We want to hit a land drop. So we have both Trial Lock for the Delight Halfling and Counter Spell for Thoughtseize. Put on... Oh, God. Put on top of my library. Probably going to regret that. This will not resolve. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Problem is, Count of This. We're out to Thoughtseize them anyway. I think we just crack a clue. Because if we count that, we've still got to deal with all the bloody constructs, haven't we? So we draw a card here. We draw the thoughts is what we know about. We'd love to hit a land drop. They equip the sugar out of the token. Yeah. Oh, in for one. Oh, two double sugar plant token. In for two. I guess preordain plus clue crack does flip Tammy over, then we just die to the bird. So that's not a thing we can allow. They're going to re-equip to make our Boyle Grazer into a formidable blocker. A 2-3. has reach 2. But it doesn't kill our Tamiyo. We untap and draw a land. Which we will... We'll thought seize them first. Let's have a look at their hand. We know they've got a cord, right? It's cord and the one ring. Fuck me. I guess we take the cord so they can't hold it up in our turn. And we can count the ring if they had to cast it. We play this tapped. We go to combat. We attack them, we trigger and make an investigate token, and they get to block, and she survives because she's a 0-3. Okay. They're going to lose a land here, so this probably means they have to make the ring. Oh, they're going to make another construct instead. That makes sense for trying to beat down here. What else could they have? Another Shuko, triple Shuko. Looks like my old army token's gone under the bus somewhere here. Now, they got Dryad Arbor... As their land drop for turn. So we can bow master the arbor, kill the light halfling, they're not casting the ring for a while. They put triple shuko on our boreal grazer. No, they move one to the plant token. They move another one to the plant token. They move another one to the plant token. They want an attack with the plant token, block with the grazer, basically. Uh, they attack with that and the construct. We're gonna take five, I think, and just kill the plant token here. No, mm. no, we're going to trade off one, chump the other, get their board state down, and they suit up the grazer, and then we have a choice to make about where our 
drown on the lock goes. But I think in the meantime, we're going to bowmaster the uh, arboreal uh, the dryad arbor. Get rid of that. Untap. Draw a preordain. So we can flip Tamiya this turn. Which is pretty decent. So we go preordain. We find Lorien revealed and cling to dust. We're going to put them both on top of our library. And we're going to use the Lorien revealed to get an island maybe. No, we want to kill it counter spell for the ring, don't we? If they go land drop counter spell, that's bad. I guess we've got a bowmaster in play then. So then ringing isn't the worst thing in the world. We'll crack a clue. Oh, I should have bottomed those cards to try and hit a land drop is what I should have done. We'll crack a clue. We're going to go shields down for a turn. They're going to probably resolve the ring, which is a thing. Uh, Tamiya will flip. And we will plus two Tamiyo. So all their creatures get smaller when they attack us. Now we can play another Tamiyo, which blocks reasonably well. Or we can go get a land with Lorien's Revealed. I think you should play another Tamiyo. Okay. We have a Tamiyo online. We have Chump Blockers. They're going to untap. If they go land drop, they can play the ring. If they don't go land drop, they can't play the ring. That sounds like an obvious statement, but that's the situation we put them in by killing that Dryad Arbor. They're going to move the sugars to the Contra Tokens. They're going to keep the Grazer around as a decent blocker, as opposed to... Getting into the red zone with all their creatures, I guess. Putting all those on the construct tokens, they're massive. Absolutely massive. Putting one on Delight Halfling as well, okay. Okay, moving them back to them to the Halfling. I don't really know what the hell's going on here in terms of the combat step. They're moving them around the load. I don't know what they're doing with their time. Go to combat. They take both constructs at Tamiyo. We're going to. Oh, one at us. Interesting. So they're going to get shrunk by Tamiyo, which has like the uptick is kind of like old Jace Architect of Thought. Um, we can take five to the face and then just chump block like this. Tamiyo survives. We get an eight. And then in their end step, they didn't even move the Shukos back, which seems like a mistake. We untap, we draw a preordain. My Tamiyo has gone dark for some reason. I don't know why. Um, God, we can kill a construct. Down tick Tamiyo, kill a construct by getting drowned on the lock back. Or we just keep ticking towards our ultimate, which is draw half the library. Which doesn't seem that good here. I'm going to preordain and try and hit a land drop. <sighs> cool, we do. So we're going to go bottom of library, top of library, and draw it. We play the Pluid Delta. We crack the Delta. We go and grab an island, and then we go uptick Tamiyo, and then we drown one of those constructs. No, undo. No, we don't. We wait until that turn, because I'm not getting it back this turn. So we're going to hold up counter spell, we're going to hold up drown the lot, we're going to hold up chump blockers, and pass to them. Tamiyo is now on six loyalty. Quite an annoying planeswalker to shift once she's down. They've got the mana for ring, I'm pretty sure that's what we're about to see. Cast ring, we say no. Oh, hang on, it can't be counted because it's a legendary spell. And that's a delight halfling. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, that is fine, I guess. I hadn't thought about it being legendary and delight halfling making legendary spells uncountable. That's something I hadn't considered up until this point. They gain some protection here. They're going to move to combat. They're both coming at us. They're both going to get shrunk. So we're going to drown the lock, the big one. Boom. Then we're going to go cling to dust. Actually, you know what? We need to keep up counter spell, don't we? So we're going to blocks. I think I throw a little baby Tamiyo under the Construct token here. Well, they've turned up a little bit. They have got Shukos and Dorks for days, haven't they? And they're going to move the Shukos to the Grazer. And we're going to gain some life. They haven't tapped the ring to draw cards. Oh, I should have took that ring earlier with the Thoughtseize. If I'd thought about how the... Well, I was going to kill Delighted Halfling and chose not to, didn't I? So, okay. Ping, the, ping this Halfling for one damage. End of turn, we're going to go Black Mana, Cling to Dust. The thing where Bob and get three life. Untap. Draw a Dark Slick Shores. Oh, minus this... Bring back Drown the Lock, play a land, play a Void Walker. No attacks, got all these chump blockers. Opponent loses one life from the ring. Gotta look out for Bird now, they're gonna draw into it. 
I thought I was doing really well until I kind of was going to kill the half thing and then, and then never bothered. That's kind of the problem where we got to. Attack us with a construct and a grazer. We're going to block the construct. We can take three though. If they activate the ring, we get to kill the delight half thing, which puts them off mana, but probably hits their land drop. So there's a, a back and forth there. They're going to float some mana before they do it. Maybe they play the bird before they do it. Okay, they're going to draw two cards. Two bow master triggers, both targeting the halfling. They float a colorless and the halfling dies. We get a 2-2 out of this. They get to draw two cards though, which is pretty strong. They cast Springheart and Untucko onto the construct. And we're going to say... Mm -hmm. I don't get a two for one here if I kill the constructs. They still get the enchantments. So we're going to say no with counter spell. We actually get that now as a, as a thing we can play off of the Void Walker. They play an Arbor Royal Grazer. They put a land to play out of their hand if they have one. Which they do. They have a Carnage Garden, make a zero one. I don't bother cycling my Lorien Revealed. We draw a Dark Slick Shores. I'm going to sack my Void Walker. Choose the Druid. And then I can bestow it, I think. No, I can't bestow it. Also, I don't have green mana, so I can't make copies of Bowmaster, unfortunately. We make this. We play a land. This ticks up, makes a body. And then I'm going to tick up Tamiya. Shoot the front end of their team if they attack. And then I'm going to hold up Drown the Lock. Uh, I want to cast Lorien Reveal for draw three cards. But now, here we have access to Drown the Lock and Cling to Dust if we need to gain life or counter a threat, essentially. Like, like the bird. I can't let them resolve the bird. They take two life loss there from their own ring. They start moving their sugars about, which is something they seem to really enjoy doing. I don't know how I'm down on clocks because I'm narrating to you guys at home. I don't know how I'm down on clock and they're moving sugars around. They come in with a construct token and a plant token, both at me. So we're going to blocks. We'll trade our insect for their plant. And we'll stick an orc army underneath the construct for now. They're going to activate their one ring, which will draw them three cards, allow us to shoot three damage into something, and make a 3-3, three, three, which is pretty good. I think I'll just shoot their face, because their life is getting quite low. With a ring doing four damage to the next turn. This puts them to seven, which is a killable range, I feel. They also only have extra four mana, so like even though they're drawing so many cards, it doesn't really... Sorry, three, they're doing three life loss next, so not four. Uh, I thought I got the four here. So uh, they've got a lot of cards, but they can't actually cast all of them when they're stuck on four mana. They're now up to five. It's a good amount to be at. They cast another ring. We can drown that one, which is a shame we don't have our... Can't talk about mana value less than or equal to the number of cards drawn the graveyard, which is four. It's a shame we don't still have our Void Walker. But on the upside, this stops them from resetting their ring, stops them from losing their life next turn, stops them from tapping it to, you know, ping themselves for four and similar. We untap and we find Psychic Frog. Okay. I guess we down tick Tamiyo, get back, drown the lock, play a frog and pass. Yeah, drown the lock goes back to hand. Psychic Frog comes down. We didn't hit a land this turn, so maybe I should be cycling this Lore Reveal just to make a chump blocker. I think so. I can get it back with Tamiyo in two turns time. Get the Watery Grave, play the Watery Grave tapped. Make a 1-1 one -one that chumps their big construct. Go to combat. I might attack them for three here. Try and clear out some of these grazers now. No, they're gonna take three. They felt the bodies are valuable. So we have access to Cling the Dust and we have access to Drown the Lock. They're going to take three damage here going to five. They can activate the ring again, but they'll take four. It'll give me four individual pit. Oh my goodness. Shifting Woodland. That can become a one ring. They're going to cast Summoner's Pack, which I think is going to get Titan, which we can't counter right now. But once this resolves, we can. So let's let that happen. Shifting Woodland can just become a ring right, which allows them to Legend rule the old one away. They got Nadu, and they're going to cast. Do they have two Nadus in hand, do we think? If they have two Nadus, we just lose, right? So let's drown and lock this. And then if they've sandbagged up the two Nadus here, good on them. Did they have one and just draw the Summoner's Pack? They're going to Summoner's Pack for another one. Okay, they're going to draw most of their deck here. This is probably going to be a Thassa's Oracle kill, I think. So they go to four, and they make a Nadu. There's probably a lot of ways for me to never let this be a thing by keeping up more interaction, but here we go. So now what they want to do is just hit two blue sources plus uh, their... Um, that's Oracle, essentially. And then they will have it. Now, Besager isn't that, but it allows them to cast another creature, which gives them two more draws. Yeah, so they've found a Bristly Bill, which basically doubles up on drawing the deck, because then when Bristly Bill's in play, they can, for each landfall trigger they get off of the Nadu, it triggers and puts a counter on a creature, and then triggers Nadu again. Although, they might whiff here. They haven't hit enough mana yet, interestingly. They hit another bill, 
I think they hit another Shuko, but that doesn't do anything. Find Simic Growth Chamber, which allows them to battle the land back to hand, but I think they played Storming Wild Woodlands for turns, so they don't get a land drop here. Do they have any more activations? Did they just whiff? No. Do they have a Delighted Half- Oh, they have a Delighted Halfling in hand. They revealed that. That's two more draws. <laughs> We're close to a whiff. They find another Delighted Halfling. If they don't hit a land with this next one, they lose. But then they can activate the One Ring, or they take four then. They find Summoner's Pact, which is pretty good. They can Summoner's Pact now for a creature to get two more draws out of this. But they need mana for the creature. They don't have to. Do they play one singular Memnite to enable the Summoner's Pact for a Memnite? They play a Dryad Arbor, but the Dried Arbor got killed earlier, so they actually do have that line available to them, and I assume they're not playing a second Arbor. Ladies and gentlemen, there we go. The Nardu deck just whiffed on a combo turn, which is kind of how it felt when I was playing it earlier. It just feels like... It feels very clunky. I, I think once the refined version of it gets found, it's going to be unstoppable and probably a problem for the format, but as you can see, it's a high-skill ceiling deck. Um, even a high-skill floor, I think, to actually get it going. And you can whiff like that. My opponent's even... Now they're just moving the, the shikos around now. Okay, we're back to playing magic in the normal way, which is interesting. Um, cool, right. Attacks then. So they attack me, I assume, with an 8-5. And I'm going to put an insect token underneath it. They die if we can get one damage through and they have a ring trigger next turn. They can in upkeep turn their stone woodland into a ring to avoid the trigger. Oh, but the trigger will still happen. So, yeah, not the best. It's a shame that Tamiyo can't get back uh, Orcish Bowmaster, honestly, but yeah, it is what it is. We can make something called Fly, but they have two reaches, so that doesn't do anything either. So then we can go like down tick Tamiyo. Oh no, she's minus three to down tick. We can't down tick her right now. We're actually at the mercy of whatever we draw plus the clue tokens. We've got two draws. Oh, excuse me. We drew Dalthy Voidwalker. Uh, I'm going to crack this clue. We drew a Tamiyo. I'm going to up tick my Tamiyo. They have three blockers. We need to get through with three creatures and we just can't. We just cannot do that. So they might still win, frustratingly, because they get to redraw the whole deck again next turn because we can't get the damage through. I guess a push would be good. I shouldn't have had Tamiyo there. That was a waste of mana. Okay, let's escape this and we want to draw a card. So it says non-creature. So let's get rid of their one ring for blue, black, blue, blue. And then we'll get rid of bauble, delta, but this, this, and this. Doesn't really matter. If we draw a push, we can try and kill the Nadu. We drew a Merc Tide Regent, which... Oh. We get to flip our Tamiyo. And do we have a push in the bin? We do not have a push in the bin. Yeah, play... Mm. Keep this one. And then uptick again. And then move to combat. And they unfortunately have four blockers. Oh, they whiffed and I couldn't punish them. My deck just couldn't get there. I could have made the frog fly. I could have swung. They've got to play double summoners pack this turn. So they don't really win here, I don't think. Oh shit, yeah, they don't win here. That's four. And then in another four. Oh, fuck. If I thought about that, I should have been saying off for the next turn. At least they have to tap a dork to do this. But they're going to hit so many land drops here. It doesn't really matter. They go to one. They can't activate the waterlogged grove because that'll kill them. But they do get to just draw a bunch of cards. They find Court of Calling. So if they have Thassa's Oracle, they've won. Well, they need to get a land drop and one more one mana creature, which I'm pretty sure they have in their hand. Colony Garden does get them another green creature. So that's now cord for two if they can get their deck emptied. Hit Cavern of Souls, which will allow them to play another creature. They've hit two more land drops, so they're not hurting for mana now, but they can't crack even their Misties, to be fair. They haven't drawn the fastest Oracle if they're playing it because we didn't see it get revealed. You get to see every card they draw. Um, so it's still in the deck, which is kind of jammy, really. Like, I've, I've played games where that just isn't the case. I would have drawn it and thus been absolutely fucked. They keep going. They're about to call them, but I think they've realized they need to call once they've emptied their deck. It is kind of... I'm, I'm cutting out all this long time, so I just sit here staring into space, but it is kind of boring watching your opponent process this. And that's one of the issues, especially online. I guess in paper, you'll have a much quicker shortcut where you're like, double activate here, so reveal, reveal, resolve, resolve, double activate here, reveal, reveal, and so on. You can like speed it up with shortcutting. Uh, digital, there's just no way to do that, which means completing two or three games of Magic in the allotted clock time will be very difficult. So they're going to call for three here, which is weird because I thought a call for two would be better. Uh, they failed to find, question mark? Yeah, they failed to find a creature card. They're, they're not playing Thoracle, which is just nuts to me. I guess it must be in their hand and they can't currently cast it. They have named Wizard with this, by the way, which is a blue mana... Oh, Sylvan Safekeeper. Okay, so they're not using the blue mana for Thassa's Oracle. I guess they might have just corded to look at their deck and thus check if they have enough land sources to hit to be able to play the Thassa's Oracle on the, on the final go. As you have my Cradle of whatever, which makes all the lands tap for forest mana. So they've got abundance of green mana now. Do they have any more blue? A Boreal Grazer, sure. Now, one of the ways that they can recycle their graveyard into their library is that some of these decks are playing Endurance, which means you can reset parts of the deck for the combo turn, which, you know, I was just talking about how fucking dull it can be to watch. 
Uh, yeah, that that sounds even worse, right? Imagine watching paint dry, but they, they can rewind time whilst you're watching the paint dry. The light half the end of the battlefield. Yep, they should go that. Cool. So they've 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 got there in terms of um, well, they hit Cavern Souls there, stuck in name blue. They've got there in terms of drawing the whole deck. They've named Wizard with Cavern again. They need to hit one more blue source, which I'm assuming they will. Three cards in library, two green in pool. Can't activate Waterlog Grove. Play the light half, and that's something sick. Shooko the Halfling, down to two cards in library. They hit an island! Wow, there we go. There is our Thassa's Oracle Manor. If you've ever, if, I personally think Thassa's Oracle is the most boring fucking win condition in the history of Magic the Gathering. And this version of it is even worse. Like it makes me want to die. Uh, cool, they got there. Uh, this probably needs to be fixed for online play, right? And by fixed, I mean like not work like that because that's pretty terrible. Um, right, so are we on the same game plan as before? Stern Scolding seems good. Deluge seems quite good. Way better than it is in the Hammer version. And I guess Dress Down just turns the combo off for a turn. That does seem good. Uh, we're going to cut Cling. The Void Walkers aren't too hot. There's no Graveyard Matters stuff. Then what the fuck else do we cut for this stuff? I guess one counter spell. So we cut one Drown the Lock. It's worse. Well, is it? Drown can actually kill a bird when it's in play. Or Trim a Bauble. I'm sure thought these two. It's much worse than the late game. Right. We're on the play. Maybe being on the play, we should keep the thought seasons in. We find Deluge and Murktide. That is not good enough. That's a mulligan. We find Preordain, Frog, Bobble, four lands, one of which will be going on the bottom of our library as we keep this as our multi six. Maybe we finally get to get into the red zone with the frog. Maybe. We're going to put the island on the bottom of our library. Done. Then we're going to go Delta. Crack it, grab that island, and then we're going to go Preordain. Regards, Tamiyo, Dark Slix, Dark, Dark Slix at the bottom, Tamiyo to the top. Absolutely. We're going to hold the bauble for the uh, for a Tamiyo flip, I think. Get a frog online, then a Tamiyo online. Seems pretty decent. They go County Heart Garden. County Garden, sorry. Not County Heart. Uh, we'll go Dark Slix Shores. Blue and black mana for a psychic frog. They play another County Garden. Not a County Heart Garden. It makes a zero one. We're going to untap. We're going to go Tamiyo. Watery Grave, not shocked in, Bauble, and then we're gonna just get into the red zone with this frog. They'll trade a plant token for it, right? They'll not trade for it, they'll, they'll chump. Trade a plant for us to draw a card. They don't want us to draw a card. Cool, so we will not draw a card. We could have cracked our Bauble and flew to draw a card, but I think we'll do that next turn. We'll hold up push, so we can kill a wall, a delighted halfling. Guess we probably should hold it up for uh, the stupid fucking bird, if I'm honest. What log grow from our opponent? If they play the bird here, we crack the bauble, look at the top card of their library, push the bird, untap, draw a card off that for Tamiyo. And then we can pitch three cards to the psychic frog, get it into the air, hit them, and then we'd flip Tamiyo. And then we're kind of off to the races at that point. End of turn, we're still gonna crack the bauble. Their next card is Summoner's Pact. Okay, so we untap. We draw off the bauble, draw off a turn. Okay, we're gonna thought seize them. Their hand is Endurance, Endurance, Springheart and Nintoko, Springheart and Nintoko, Summoner's Pact. Sylph and safekeep. Okay, so we get rid of the endurance from their hand and leave them with another endurance. Fucking hell, not good, not good. This is their hand, six cards. So we can't realistically swing into it very well because we don't have a way to crack our revolt for push. They just get to make an endurance this turn, that's that. Okay, and the endurance also turn off our second frog's ability to go in the air as well. Okay, what I'm, what I'm feeling here is that I'm not a blue-black graveyard deck, but endurance is just arbitrarily very strong into us. They might suckle their other endurance themselves. Yeah, okay. So Frog will still be able to get flying. Next turn when we attack with Tamiyo, we can actually crack the clue to enable push and that helps us. But that would then mean they can still and safe keep with their endurance, which saves it. And that means that the endurance can block and kill our Tamiyo and that's a bad time. I guess we push the safe keeper first. Yeah, I think that's what we do. They put Spring Heart and Toko Husk thing on the endurance. They play a land. They won't get the mana here to copy the endurance. And then I'm just gonna try and push this uh, Silver and Safekeeper now. I think that's the right thing to do. They'll sack a land to protect it. Okay, so that's now alive. We're gonna untap. We're gonna draw another push. We're gonna go to combat and attack, making a clue. I'm then gonna crack the clue. Oh, I should've played this before combat to draw a card. We find Bauble, and then we're gonna try and push this endurance. They're gonna sack a land to keep it alive. Kills our Tamiyo. Okay, kill Tamiyo. Oh, and then we're gonna play Bauble. I think we're gonna try and bounce that next turn as well. Uh, we're gonna look at the top card of their library. We're both very low on clock. That last game went on for a million years. They're gonna draw a forest here, which does give them a land drop. And they can then make another copy of Endurance using the uh, Spring Heart and Toko ability. Fuck me, that's strong. Real strong. Okay, 
that's another endurance. They chose to shuffle nothing in. They attack for four here, which is pretty good for us, actually, because we get to swing now and kill the other endurance and so on. We did not draw another land, so we're going to preordain. Our land count is very low, to be fair. Preordain, put on the bottom of our library, put on the top of our library. And then we've got access to push. Push doesn't kill an endurance here. We've got access to stupor. Yeah, we'll pay too low for that. Not sinking stupid, sorry. We're gonna cast this now. We'll turn that endurance to the hand if we can. Will they sack another land to protect it? They will. Okay. It has shroud now. Okay, so we're not attacking because they can just block and kill us. This turn, I think I'm pitching both my cards to my Sushi Fork to make it a block onto that endurance. Um, they play a bristly bell. Then did they hit a land up as well? No, okay. That's something. To attack with a 4 5. We take 4. No blocks. Untap and find something useful, please. Toxic Deluge for an amount. Interesting. That is interesting. I guess Deluge for five times them out. Um, not the best plan, and I hate that in a way. I guess we Deluge for less and then push the Endurance once their whole board is gone. No, because they can give it Shroud in response. So I Deluge for five. Okay, let's get into the red zone. In with a the frog. They're going to block with their Endurance. This is fine. And then we're going to go Deluge for five. Which hurts a lot, but... It's better than being dead. It also hurts them a lot because they've just sacked all their lands. They're all in on this endurance plan, aren't they? Oh, they get to keep a 1-1? One, one? Forgot about the bestow thing. Thank good goodness the last card in their hand is push, right? Okay, their hand is four cards, one of which is summoner's pack and a forest. I'm pretty sure we know they've got a... No, they set the forest. The lighted halfling, which actually does kill us in two turns. Can we draw a murktide region? We drew orcish bowmasters, which is pretty good. We're going to hold that up. Surprise them, if you will. We have counter magic here, but it doesn't actually affect the big bird because of delighted halflings. They're going to try and put that on there. We're going to say no. Oh, no, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not. This is not an X one. Fuck. Fuck that up. Okay. Well, this is kind of fine. We'll counter that. We can't let them have multiple creatures. We've got to stay alive and play a Merc Tide region and then beat them to death with it. That is our game plan. Oh, they're hitting land drops. That's the one thing we did not want to happen. They can't attack here. I should have Burmastered in combat. We probably would have got them here. They can play Ring next turn if they draw it. Play a Delta. Pass to them. Pretty sure they've got this. We aren't exactly in a position where we're... Well, I mean, a Merc Tide just opens the game right up in the air. Uh, a Tamiyo at that point would have been pretty decent too. They summon us pack now for a fucking bird or something. Play a Shuko, love life. Yeah, there's the bird. They play the bird. Bird kills us in the air. And if they have a Shuko in hand, or anything really. I mean, it just kills us. So we now need to draw Fatal Push or Drown the Lock or similar. We drew Preordain, which is pretty good. Let's, let's look, look quite deep. Three cards deep into our deck. Top cards are Bowmaster and Preordains. We're going to put Bowmaster on the bottom. Preordain on the top, because it looks three cards deep. Uh, we're going to go again with a Preordain. Three cards deep. We find Counterspell. We find Dark Slick Shores. So we bought them both. We find Orcish oh, Bowmasters. <laughs> All right. All right. That's it. Um, super interesting game, Modern. Fucking taxing. Really long. I was planning to try and do the whole league for a video. But like this is this this round is almost an hour long. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. It feels like I'm playing old legacy sometimes with this stuff. But instead of like dealing with the obnoxious old stuff for magic, we're dealing with all the obnoxious new stuff.